Gentlemen, perhaps one of the best, longest running PC game series uh, in terms of its profitability, its likability, and also the fact that it's timeless has been Grand Theft Auto. You know, it poked fun at everything. There was no one side on the political spectrum. It was apolitical. It was just pure apolitical satire. And it was funny. When strangers you've never met threaten your way of life, who do you call? Republican Space Rangers. They are Butch, Commander, and Dick. And if we don't fight them here, they'll follow us to America and pollute the blessed homeland. You know the drill, boys. Your strange religion and foreign ways threaten our freedom! When primitives, light years away, threaten their way of life, the Republican Space Rangers will be there to make sure democracy wins again. Republican Space Rangers! Pure apolitical satire. GTA 6 is going to go woke. They'll also go broke. GTA 6 story missions leak name. Black Lives Matter, Critical Race Theory. What happened to this beautiful Grand Theft Auto franchise? It's gone woke once more. Wokeness is a disease. GTA gives in to woke mob in 2009. So on this channel, I've covered a lot of entertainment franchises, video games, and movies and TV shows where conservatives fundamentally do not understand the politics of what they're consuming, despite the fact they claim to absolutely love it. And now in the culture war, apparently the new Grand Theft Auto has already gone woke, despite there being very scarce details about it, because the new main character is allegedly a woman who is Latina, and that's it. Like, that really doesn't seem like the most woke thing ever. And of course it's not. And from my understanding, woke not only means like some sort of identity politics, it also means leftists ruining things. And that is extremely ironic considering the main message of most GTA games a lot of the time is anti-capitalism, which is quite bizarre considering how the franchise has actually become an absolute dumpster fire in terms of monetization, but also an absolutely huge satire of conservative America. Now, as we're going to see, some people will say GTA used to criticize it all. Left, right, it doesn't care. And it's true that while GTA has no problem at throwing shots at the left and liberals mainly as well, it's also very obvious that the main focus of the satire is not left-wing people, is not woke people, it is very much conservative people. And it's very much that the people moaning about GTA going woke are actually believers in the type of ideology that has consistently been ridiculed throughout the GTA franchise. And it's just another franchise they fundamentally do not understand the point of. It's like Metal Gear Solid, right? Metal Gear Solid, it has mechs. It has this over-the-top action. Therefore, loads of people love it and then start crying if you point out it has a pro-leftist message. And it's the same with GTA, right? It's so over-the-top and ridiculous. What you can take out of it is pretty much what you want in terms of you can just run around driving your car, doing traditional Grand Theft Auto, like messing around and not even paying attention to the story. And I have no problem with people doing that. If you don't want to pay attention to the politics of Grand Theft Auto, go ahead. The problem comes is then you start moaning about the series going woke, when by your own definition of what woke is, the series has pretty much always been woke. So we're going to get into this, but before we go any further, please like the video and in the comments, I guess what I'm asking today is, what is the worst example of fans of a popular entertainment franchise fundamentally misinterpreting the politics? Like, I've covered this a lot, with things like Bioshock 1, Metal Gear Solid, Red Dead Redemption, but there probably is even worse examples out there, so let me know in the comments. Maybe a personal experience of you arguing with people about series having a leftist message when people won't accept it. Also consider becoming a patron. I want to build up as many $1 to $3 patrons as possible, the benefits of which are getting access to the private patrons Discord server and my Nintendo Switch friend code. Also check out my second channel, The Cavernacle Extra, where I try and archive my live streams. I've been pretty bad at it lately, but thanks everyone for tuning into the two streams this week. Had a lot of fun getting back to streaming. Also check out the subreddit down in the description. And also for every 5K, we get a new chocolate orange. We are so close to 80K. Help me get there and get the final little chocolate orange on the pyramid. Also, I won't accept chocolate orange hate, which seems to be becoming far more common as I grow as a channel. So before we dive into the controversy, I just want to give you my experience with the Grand Theft Auto franchise because I don't want it to come across 
like I'm a casual fan of this franchise. Like I really do like a lot of the early games in this franchise. And I'm not someone who played it to mess around. Now I first remember playing this game with Vice City, my friend, uh, was allowed like adult games. So we used to go around his house and play Vice City. This must have been like 2004 or something like that. And I absolutely loved it. Of course, never told my parents, but I have fond memories of it and fond memories of, of course, like the soundtrack, things like Michael Jackson, Genesis, Phil Collins, all that good stuff in there. And of course I played things like San Andreas on the original Xbox and I enjoyed that, but I was a kid at that time. So I didn't take in the messaging of this franchise really. Like how could I? I was a naive kid and I think this actually what happens to a lot of people complaining about the wokeness is that they might have been a bit younger and not realised the politics of the franchise. But when I was about 12, 13, I got GTA 4, and me and my friends used to play this online all the time. We were absolutely obsessed with just setting up a private lobby and playing with each other, go to the airport, grab the Sultan RS from behind the mansion, and I absolutely love this game. And I actually bought it again recently for my Xbox with the boosted graphics. Holds up so well. Like the physics engine on this game, which obviously was expanded upon for Max Payne, is so crazy good and I'm so disappointed they scaled it back because again, so fun to play that game. The driving also so, so good for an open world game. And of course, something that I started to appreciate more as I grew up playing this franchise, but also as a young adult is the absolutely amazing and hilarious satire of modern American life. Of course, it's critiques of consumer capitalism, the migrant experience, the American dream with Nico Bellic and everything. And honestly, GTA 5 for me was a massive disappointment. Completely did a 180 on the tone of GTA 4, which I really liked. A lot of the satire while there, I didn't think was as scathing as it used to be or as funny as it used to be. And of course, GTA Online has become this absolute juggernaut, which seems like a product that the old writers of the old GTA games would absolutely make fun of as they open like actual casinos where you can spend money in GTA Online. And honestly, I'm not that excited for GTA 6 at all. Like, I like Red Dead Redemption 2 enough. I didn't like it more than Red Dead 1. I'm not hyped for GTA 6. I will always maintain that GTA 4 is by far the best game in that franchise. And funnily enough, it's probably what we're gonna focus on most today because I do have a lot of love for it. And also I did play the two PSP games and Chinatown Wars, like I'm a big fan of GTA overall, but I think GTA 5, as much as I played that online about like eight or nine years ago, I really do not have much affinity for it. Now getting into the controversy, which I already alluded to about a female protagonist and also something else they said in the article is they've changed the frat boy culture at Rockstar Games which I think Jason Schreier did a big piece on it and how it was extremely toxic. And they've changed it. And also there was that controversy about them removing, I guess, jokes at the expense of the transgender community. And people were crying about that as well. And there's just a general sense that Rockstar is going to scale back on potentially some offensive jokes from the old games. And I will say, playing some older GTA games, there is some jokes at the expense of transphobes, but I also find the jokes about transgender people, pretty tasteless and just unnecessarily hostile as well. Like a lot of them do not come across as even attempts at satire, this is in GTA 4 specifically. So GTA has always been good at criticizing the powerful. So I for one welcome removing things that weren't even really jokes at the expense of minorities and transgender people. That's just me. But a lot of people are very mad because they just like bigotry or something. Uh, there's a lot of videos about how Grand Theft Auto has gone woke from people like The Quartering. And I watched them all today. Uh, a lot of nothing burgers because a lot of these people aren't really fans of Grand Theft Auto. They just jump on the culture war. But the one that stood out the most was from another British guy uh, called Mr. H Reviews. I think I've come across him like once before. And I found his points pretty laughable, so let's watch some of his video. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Perhaps one of the best, longest-running PC game series uh, in terms of its profitability, its likability, and also the fact that it's timeless has been Grand Theft Auto. Now, we've got a New York Post article here which states Grand Theft Auto 6 to have a female hero, not an issue. Literally no one cares about that at all. But here's, here's the, the clincher. To scale back racist and sexist jokes, there are genuinely funny elements to racism and sexist jokes. There 100% is. 100% there are funny elements to those. And the reason why you at home can sit there on YouTube and just leave 
you know, one of the radio stations on from Grand Theft Auto is because it was hilariously satirical to everything. You know, it poked fun at everything. There was no one side on the political spectrum. It was apolitical. It was just pure apolitical satire. And it was funny. It was very, very well written. And it's sad when something which has clearly been an element of the success of Grand Theft Auto games is now removed. It's just sad. It's just a shame. You'd think to yourself... Those people that were offended didn't buy your game. But the majority did, and they're not offended. Or to bow down to, what, all of like, what, 10 people? Grand Theft Auto 6 be a success? Yeah, probably. Will it be, you know, an empty, sort of vapid husk of a game? Of what it could have been? Yeah, probably. So I don't know how old this guy is. And let me know in the comments, do you think he understands what apolitical means? Like, is he trying to say that it doesn't have a political allegiance to either side so it pokes fun at everything or does he genuinely think that now nah, GTA just doesn't have politics. So he focuses on something that I'm going to talk about, the radio stations, right? And he says it's brilliant satire, pokes fun at everything, all sides, apolitical, nothing political about it, no political agenda in GTA games, it just centrist, it pokes fun at everything. That's not true. There are elements of GTA radio that poke fun at left-wing people, progressive people, mainly liberal people, I will say, like actual liberals, not like communists and Marxists, although it does have that element in it. And I would say GTA 5 is probably the most prominent example of this, where it tries to satirize like West Coast American culture, including leftism, I guess, to an extent. But I do love the belief that GTA is going to be bad because it won't be racist and sexist anymore. Racist and sexist jokes prey upon people's own bigotry. So I think kind of like removing them is a good thing. I also think it's really, really like low tier humor because you're relying on, like I said, people's bigotry and just playing to them where the actual satire GTA often does is actually really, really good because as you're going to see, a lot of it is pretty much indistinguishable from reality and that's what makes it so good. Not because it was racist, not because it was bigoted, and when there is actually racism as part of the joke, not racist jokes, it's poking fun at the xenophobia of conservatives, right? That's where the racism is and I'm sure that is going to remain in the franchise because people can distinguish between here is a joke that the whole joke relies on your own bigotry to be funny. Here is a joke that is using racist language as part of these characters to make a point about a political group, which we're going to show you. But yeah, overall, pretty stupid. A political GTA, that makes me laugh. So although I played like Liberty City Stories on the PSP and Grand Theft Auto 3, I am not familiar as much of those games I'm sure there is the kind of like same radio stuff as Vice City, but Vice City also has the benefit of being set in the 1980s. So of course, being in the 1980s, what does this game satirize? Of course, Cold War hysteria about Marxists. Let's get into some satire of the Red Scare by GTA Vice City. What makes a real American? A cowboy hat, enjoying a fine T-bone steak, Going to a baseball game, shooting a gun. Maybe it's the freedom to go into a poor country and tell them how to do things. Heh, those are all great qualities. But one thing that makes a true patriot is the ability to choose an American car. Without gross symbols of excess, what will Americans have to look up to? The store leading the fight against communism is having a blowout sale! Ammunition has a wide array of peacemakers. Come by Ammunition on Militia Mondays, exercise your Second Amendment rights, and get 10% off all armor-piercing bullets. During the 10-minute waiting period, fire off a few rounds of the Ammunition gun range, featuring faces of famous commie pinkos. This weekend is the Ammunition Film Festival, with free screenings of the documentary Red Dawn. Ammunition, protecting your rights. <laughs> What's this I found under your bed? The only Engels you're going to read is Laura Engels Wilder. If you think your child might be a red, here are some warning signs. They read complicated literature and have concern for their fellow man. They even like to share. Tell your kids if someone approaches them with pamphlets about recycling, an invitation to a labor rally, or showing any doubts about the fairness of our system, then they should find a teacher or a policeman immediately. Oh my god. GTA Vice City woke, it's making fun of conservatism and conservatives' views towards communists while also saying positive things 
about communists, again, very, very woke. I'm sure there is so much more in GTA Vice City, but it's not the game I'm most familiar with. So in the comments, if you have any other examples, please let me know. But the one I want to focus on today, because it was both one of the most popular before GTA 5, and also because I feel like growing up in the era that this game was set, 2008, and kind of remember the politics seeping through, I think it's the best one to dissect. And I'm not going to talk about the Ballad of Gay Tony because I haven't played the DLC in absolutely years. And I was reading an article on Pink News where they say it is a pretty bad depiction of like gay club and culture and stuff like that. But at the same time, imagine if these anti SJW nerd channels were around in 2009 when Ballad of Gay Tony came out. Oh my God. Rockstar Gone Woke, one of your best friends in the GTA DLC, is a gay man. And although I'm not going to touch on this as much, one of the good things that GTA 4 often does is make fun of people like homophobes. So we're going to get into the radio station, but let's just get with the premise of GTA 4, right? So while the other games in the series are pretty much just, I guess, parodies of popular entertainment, right? So Vice City is pretty clearly influenced by both Scarface, but also Carlito's Way. Literally, Sean Penn's character from Carlito's Way is the lawyer in Vice City. It's not even a subtle reference at all. Whereas GTA 4 is a bit more of an original story, telling the tale of Nico Bellic, who I think it's pretty much confirmed at this point, is a Serbian immigrant to America, someone who fought in one of the wars during the breakup of Yugoslavia. It's unspecified, but basically the whole game is about the emptiness of the American dream, the emptiness of American consumer capitalism. Capitalism is a dirty business. And how the poor, especially poor immigrants in a place like New York, which is Liberty City basically, have to fight amongst themselves to rise the capitalist social structure, right? And of course, the ending of the game, no matter what ending you get, is pretty bleak. And Nico, despite accumulating vast wealth, is basically left with a massive hole in his life, whether that be the death of Kate, his girlfriend, or the death of his cousin, Roman. And there's lots of good dialogue talking about criticisms of, you know, war, capitalism, everything like that. War is where the young and stupid are tricked by the old and the bitter into killing each other. I'm sure someone can make a good video essay about this, but this is not what the video is about today. But also, Weasel News is the news channel that constantly appears on your radio, and it will interrupt the radio station you're listening to, to give you new segments, right? So let's listen to a couple I picked out for you. And you tell me whether or not GTA is making a woke lefty point about America. Weasel News. In health news, as more and more people realize life is pointless, their pensions are worth and they'll never be able to afford old age. A new medical report published today shows an unprecedented increase in the number of middle-aged people taking up smoking. Faced with the choice between dying at 60 or living for another 20 years in abject poverty without access to medical care, many men and women in their 40s and 50s have decided they'd rather party now and smoke themselves happily into an early grave. Other unhealthy pleasures like fast food and laughter are also said to be making a comeback. It's all news. Will the markets crash? The Barsdak has taken a serious pummeling today, with the index down below an important number for the first time since a while ago. Although this seems very dramatic, the fact is it doesn't mean much. Hedge funders, traders, and financial services people were looking anxious until they realized they claim fees whether stocks go up or down. In a near unanimous vote, Congress passed the Jingoism Act today without much debate. Besides outlawing encryption and privacy, the act makes it mandatory for all all residents to speak well of our government. Residents were pleased with the act finally passing. The BOSDAC skyrocketed five points today as the American dream became even more of a confusing mess controlled by bankers and rich investors. Growth and value indices showed higher than average default on arm loans, but not 15-year fixed liquid commodities funds in an effort to thoroughly confuse you and make you think that all this really means something. So obviously criticizing how ridiculous the stock market's impact on the US economy is. And also if you are someone who's politically conscious, you realize throughout playing GTA 4, it's a massive response to the George Bush era of conservatism. And it's not subtle. It's constantly on the radio. It frames the whole narrative of the game. The reason you're not allowed to go to different islands at the time is because of fear mongering about potential attacks on American soil. Again, the subtext of this is all about George Bush era conservatism. And wouldn't you say that that's fairly woke? If including playable female characters in GTA is woke, surely 
massive criticisms of conservatism throughout the game are also woke. If these people are so fragile about diversity, I imagine things like this would send them absolutely crazy. It's a game literally criticizing their ideology completely. Now, that might be a bit over people's head. You would say, maybe that's a bit too subtle. Maybe radio stations and adverts are a bit too subtle. And we're gonna get back to the conservative talk show <laughs> radio in GTA 4 itself. But in GTA 4 and 5, you can uh, watch the TV and there's a little show called Republican Space Rangers. And yes, this is also about Bush era conservatism. Sometimes we kill with undue glee. Oh, was that your home? Sorry. Gotta complete the mission. And possibly deny extraordinary addition. Spread an American values. Sometimes, Sometimes you, you gotta, gotta bomb an orphanage or two. Republican Space Rangers. But this is my home, brothers. Here it is you who is strange. And we all get along? <laughs> Make sure you get the children! They'll just turn into insurgents themselves! Innocent people back home will suffer, I repeat! They will suffer! Hey, this here registers as a strange planet on the insurgent scan. Well, it's on the map. If I can pronounce the name. No surprise there, but I say we take no chances anyway. Let's give them eight kinds of hell, Butch! Fire it all! With pleasure, sir! I bet these punks have no capacity whatsoever for peaceful coexistence, drive through liquor stores, gun shops, or the democratic freedom to have their votes discarded in swamps! So GTA 4 very woke, I guess, it's using a cartoon to completely roast Bush-era neoconservatism, which was all about intervention in foreign countries to create this world run by American capitalism, right? So that's not woke, apparently. Female in GTA 6 woke. Massive criticism of Bush-era interventionism and conservative politics, not woke. And it's obviously like really, really over the top, but it is still good satire. It is still really, really funny. But like I said, it's not very subtle, right? It may be optional to watch the TV, but at the same time, if you even watch TV, it's pretty likely you would see this cartoon. I think it's about 10 minutes long as well. So you might have flicked on it at some point. And there's just not an equivalent criticism of the left in this game. Like anyone saying that this game is either apolitical or take shots at all sides equally is ridiculous because it definitely does not. It clearly has something to say about America, American xenophobia, American conservatism, American interventionism during the Bush presidency. Like that is the subtext of the game. The subtext of the game isn't, ha ha, liberals bad and conservatives bad. Equally, I'm making a game about that. That's definitely not true. And anyone telling you that has not paid attention to the game and plays into my larger point as well. Even when it is shoved right in your face, conservatives cannot analyze media, especially subtext. Like they do not understand subtext. If you tell conservatives that GTA 4 is an anti-conservative game with a bit of anti-capitalism in there as well, they probably think you're crazy. But if you actually play it with an analytical mindset, you can see what this game is responding to if you think about the time this game was actually developed. And on that note, probably the best satire in the game is actually conservative radio, which is on all the time. You can listen to this all the time if you want when you're playing the game. Voiced by Ted Lasso himself. And I advise everyone to go listen to this because it's still so relevant to conservative culture war arguments. But I will play you a couple clips and then we will talk about it. WKTT, because democracy is worth suppressing rights for. WKTT 1066. Now I take that pledge every morning when I wake up, I, I, I look in the mirror, okay? You know, after I get done doing my facial scrub and then, you know, some uh, I, I, I put some toner on my face. Uh, but after that, I say that pledge. It's great for strength and purity of our nation. There are no better ways to serve your country apart from one. And it involves taking out museums and inappropriate health facilities. If, if we're going to stay pure out there and focus on turning this country into an aggressive and limited access paradise, then listeners, 
You're going to need to start by avoiding uh, uh, romance novels. Next caller, what's wrong with this country? We don't have enough mascots. You know, okay, that is, now that is true. This is so true. Kids, the children of America, need to look up to people like like Derek the Dodo and, and, and not some not some liberal puppet uh, on public television teaching you how to count. Okay, you know, there's only three numbers I care about, and that is three, two, one, launch. All right, and that is the that is what I like to hear. Right before we send a missile country's mouth, all right? Now, if I, if I need my kids to, to be taught tolerance, you know, sometimes, which is a dirty word in my household, tolerance, but I'll, I'll tolerate them fighting, okay? That is what I'll tolerate. I, I don't need them uh, to learn about life from, from, from puppets. God, I, I, you know, what has happened to radio? I mean, to this city, to, to this world. I, I, you know, I cannot wait to be judged because I'm going to be okay. I already know that. I know that because I have secrets that I keep within me, okay? And if you keep them bottled inside of you, then you get to release them in heaven. Because right now on this earth, my secrets are the only thing that keep me on heaven's path. Now, most of you are, are you're, a lot of you are screwed, and, and rightfully so. Okay, we've gotten into the into the PC mode of like, you know, hey, we're all the same, we're all equal, man. Hey, women can do anything a man can do. Yeah, you know, right? Yeah, sure. BS, okay? I don't shop uncontrollably, okay? You know, I can drive a car for more than 30 minutes without hitting something. Okay, that's the difference. Now, today we're talking about family values on the program. And I'll tell you right now, I'm married to two women. My wife, my lovely, lovely wife with her beautiful hair and pretty face. The second person I'm married to, America. Now, here's my thing. I won't go down south on either. Why? Because it does not help with populating this great country with real Americans. There, there are a lot of great traditions left, like uh, like uh, you know, you know, hating open-minded liberals and, and spreading unsubstantiated slurs about them. Okay. No. Now, now on Independence Day, you know, I like to find a, a nice Indian casino and celebrate by trying to steal their shit again. That's what I'm into. Traditional values. So I just listened to that while you were listening to it, and it's just so funny because it's obviously non-stop just absolutely throwing everything at you but does this really sound too different from reality obviously it's like poking fun at people like rush limbaugh and a few shades of alex jones in there as well but a lot of what he's saying sounds so similar and it actually even is making fun of people criticizing gta 6 for going woke right that is what this radio station is doing and obviously it's like american exceptionalism taken to an extreme but very effective satire because if you heard this on the radio would you think it's not real? If you heard some of these segments on YouTube or something, would you think it isn't real? Because that's how good the satire is that even though this game was released in 2008 and who knows when that was actually recorded, 2007 maybe, it's still so relevant and it still has something to say about American conservative culture, the culture war, their fight against PC culture and now their fight against the woke and the wokeism and that's why it's so effective. And like I said, there is just no equivalent in GTA 4 or any GTA of the stuff I'm showing you now attacking the other side, attacking leftists, attacking liberals. This stuff just does not exist because GTA 4 specifically was making a point about American exceptionalism, American capitalism, George Bush, and just conservative politics as a whole. I know that might be quite hard for some conservatives to understand. I know you don't do subtext very well. I know you think it might satirize all sides equally. I'm here to tell you that this sort of radio stuff and TV shows on GTA combined with the subtext of the actual plot shows you that this game is trying to give you a certain message and that is anti-conservatism. So that is the game I'm most familiar with and the game I'm willing to show you that is the most woke. And if you are complaining about GTA going woke, only go and play Grand Theft Auto 4. You can go get it on any of your Xbox consoles. It has boosted graphics, it's still very good and you will probably be shocked that this game might not be how you remember it because you were a kid when you played it or you were a dumbass teenager who couldn't take in these political themes. And now Grand Theft Auto V is something that I didn't like as much. It's something that I thought was far worse on most levels. I guess I can understand why people like it because of you know how over the top it was. It even kind of seemed like a satire of itself with characters 
like Trevor and like the whole Grand Theft Auto franchise. Now I will say the satire in this game is not as good because I don't believe this game was made to make a political point where it's pretty clear that with the more serious tone of GTA 4, this game actually had a lot to say about contemporary society, which I do not think GTA 5 is really attempting to do. I actually feel like it's going back to its roots a bit more, where this is essentially ripping off a lot of movies and a lot of heist movies. Obviously, you can see the influence uh, in part of things like Heat by Michael Mann, set in Los Angeles, and just like general movies and TV shows. Michael is meant to be like Tony Soprano, for example. You have elements of Breaking Bad with Trevor. Obviously, lots of references to films like Drive and No Country for Old Men, but at the end of the day, I don't think there is much of a point being made here, apart from a general satire of American early 2010s West Coast culture. And in that, I think it criticizes like lib left people a fair bit more than some of the other games. But I do think there still is this element of criticizing American consumer capitalism. There is still satire of political parties, of political ads and Republicans. And also the Republican Space Rangers actually make a comeback and they have a sequel to the GTA 4 one, which is satirizing conservatives even more. <laughs> Everyone's pulling together for the good of the nation. Obviously, that is funny satire. I don't think it's obviously as effective as the conservative radio uh, in GTA 4 and some of the Weasel News things that play on the radio. But overall, the straw that breaks the camel's back for GTA, supposedly going woke, being a female playable character and scaling back on deliberately like racist and bigoted jokes is absolutely hilarious considering what the series has always been. Like, conservatives are mad about this. Conservatives are mad about GTA going woke. Like I said, go play a GTA game and specifically listen to the radio. And if you play GTA 4, pay attention to the story because this game is woke by your own definition, right? I wouldn't say GTA is like the most leftist franchise going, but I do appreciate its criticism of things as a leftist I don't like, like conservatism and consumer capitalism. But I wouldn't say the message is, we must create a communist society. I wouldn't say it's like Metal Gear Solid, which does have a kind of vision about the structure of society, or Death Stranding, for example, where it is kind of like, here are kind of themes we should take for our own society. GTA is not that, of course, but with games like GTA 4, it's pretty clear that trying to tell a woke story was part of the agenda. Trying to criticize conservatism and capitalism was part of the agenda of the writing team, and I would say they pulled it off pretty effectively. And right when GTA fans getting mad, they removed offensive representations of trans people in GTA 5 and also are scaling back like specifically bigoted jokes which rely on people being bigoted to be funny is such a mask off moment because it shows they don't care about the integrity of GTA, right? Like everything I played you, which is funny satire, do you think that's going away? Of course it's not going away, right? That's the stuff that's not being removed. The stuff that's being removed is actually the offensive stuff that is just funny for being offensive and not being clever. And as someone who has recently replayed these games, and seen the mean-spiritedness with how it often treats the trans community, but still appreciates its general message about society, I feel like the game and this franchise as a whole will be better off if it removes this stuff and focuses on what it does well, which is a general satire of conservatism, capitalism, and in some instances, liberalism. I have no problem with that. I hate liberals as well. So that is it for the video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments, and if you made it this far, Thank you for watching.